Hi, hi everybody. This is Lou and it looks like we're live. This is very exciting. I hope that you're, yeah, um, I hope that you're enjoying this. Well, I hope that you will be enjoying this. I've got, uh, so yeah, so I've, I've got two like possible groups of people that might be watching this and I don't want to confuse anybody. So I thought I'd just say, first of all, I have a YouTube channel and I do like art tutorials, uh, watercolour demonstrations, those kind of things. And uh, this is the channel that's hosting this live stream. So you may be watching this because you've been following that channel. In which case, I'd like to say to you that uh, this is maybe a little bit different to the kind of things that I've done before uh, because I have two like artist personas. And uh, one is the uh, kind of, yeah, the, the stuff that I do on YouTube. Uh, which is kind of colourful and bright and um, yeah I, I do lots of patterns so there's lots of crossover there but um, I also have a, a kind of an artist persona that is quite yeah it's quite abstract it's very minimal and that's what I'm going to be talking about today so I guess there's another kind of potential audience out there that is watching this because you've come across my artwork somewhere either you've come across this event on Eventbrite or you've seen my artwork on my website or on my Instagram and uh, wanted to kind of find out more about that. So um, I should explain that the live stream I'm doing today and the one I'm going to be doing tomorrow, I'm doing in conjunction with an exhibition that I'm holding in Edinburgh. The plan was to live stream from the gallery. Uh, that was the plan to be surrounded by my work on the walls and uh, that would have been fab fabulous except that we couldn't get the technology to work so instead I've come home and I'm sitting um, in my in my home studio and I'm going to be live streaming from here but the content is still going to be exactly the same it just would have been a rather prettier backdrop I hope so um, anyway I'm going to switch to the overhead camera soon because I want to start showing you my sketchbooks and some of my work and that's going to be the best way to do that so I'll be doing that in a second. Um, it would, uh, so yeah, so I'm going to be talking you through some of my sketchbook work. Um, and I'm also going to be doing uh, a couple of little demos. If you want to draw along with me, then you're very welcome to. And all you'll need is, uh, well, the very basics that you'll need is a piece of paper and a pen of some kind. I've also got a little ruler. I've got a pair of compasses um, and I've got a pencil. But if you want to watch along and uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, if you want to join in at a later date, then you're absolutely welcome to do that. Um, I've just had a question, uh, which gallery in Edinburgh? So yes, I should have said it's called the Dundas Street Gallery. Um, Dundas Street is uh, a street in Newtown, Edinburgh and it's full of galleries but this one is particularly called the Dundas Street Gallery um, and it's it's a lovely space and I've got it for the week so I'll be there until Sunday so um yeah I've uh, it, it's been a great week so far um, I've really enjoyed like hosting an exhibition it's the first time I've really had a solo exhibition in that kind of way so I'm um, uh, yeah, um, it's a it's a big learning curve, so it's it's quite fun, um, and I've really been enjoying doing it. So, so let's get on to the sketchbooks. So I'm going to switch you to the overhead camera. Um, as we go, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat, and if there are any questions that you have, uh, or any kind of comments or anything, then do let me know. Um, I'll try and keep an eye on the the chat um, and just like respond to anything that comes up there. Um, but if I do get kind of engrossed in the drawing, then uh, then I apologise for that because it, it does it does happen sometimes. Uh, it's a very mesmerising process. So here we go. I'm going to switch you to the overhead camera now. So what we have here are a selection of my sketchbooks that I've been keeping for years. So I 
I, I keep different types of sketchbooks. Um, so some of them I'll do uh, like watercolour art in and some of them I'll do like landscapes in. But these ones are predominantly uh, for abstract kind of pattern making, I suppose. Um, before I show you too much detail of what's in the sketchbooks, I thought I'd show you what I kind of do with them at the end. So the exhibition in Edinburgh is mostly of screen prints, um, other types of printmaking too, but uh, mostly screen prints. And I've got some here that I don't know how much you're going to be able to see on camera, um, but these are finished screen prints. These ones are unframed, the ones in the gallery are framed or nicely wrapped, ready to go off to their new homes. Um, but I take inspiration sometimes from the natural world, uh, sometimes from kind of uh, patterns, but also from like uh, conceptual ideas. Um, this uh, this particular one was inspired kind of by birds' nests and creating and, and also Celtic knots as well, kind of creating those patterns that kind of loop and interact and uh, fold over and into one another. This one here. I'm going to show you the kind of process for uh, for making these kind of triangle network patterns in a short while. So that's going to be a part of what I do later. But this is kind of how they end up is into uh, big prints with different layers of, of ink. So there's there's quite there's um, there's different layers of um, of ink on here. There's a background layer which probably isn't showing up very well on camera, but it's kind of it's a pearlescent ink, so it makes it like. It makes it look slightly glisteny, and it's got little um, little bits in that just catch the light. And then there's a couple of layers of pattern over the top, um, kind of interlaced with one another. Hi, Tamari from New Jersey. Oh, it's very exciting that you're watching. So yeah, so this screen print here. The design was based on um, um, a kind of mathematical concept. So there's a concept in math called uh, mathematical knots, and they are a bit like Celtic knots. And I discovered them when I was researching Celtic knots. Um, but this is the the original pattern that this came from was called a knots complement, and it um, it's everything that a knot is not. So it's like the outside of a knot, but you end up with a shape that's a bit like a, I don't know if you've come across like a Mobius strip or a Klein jar or something like that, where the inside of one shape is the outside of another. So I took that basic shape and then I worked with it and I drew lots of lines inside it. So I drew lines inside one shape that became lines outside the other shape and then printed it onto this gold leaf disc on the, on the screen print. And then this one here is a pattern that I use over and over again uh, with like lines that undulate. And again, I'm going to show you the process for making this pattern here. So yeah, so that last print I'm going to talk about a little bit more in the talk that I'm doing tomorrow. So I'm going to do a little artist talk and I'm going to talk you through the stories behind how I've come to uh, create these prints and kind of what's gone into them. Um, some of the like conceptual work that's uh, that's behind it. But before I ever get to that point, I keep sketchbooks and I draw in them um, without really much thought, I have to say. Um, there, there is thought that goes into it, but when I'm doing it, um, it's more of a kind of a mindful process, so that I'm, um, so that I'm keeping the, uh, um, sorry, I'm, I'm just getting a message saying somebody can't see what's happening. Um, I'm not sure I have to solve that problem. Um, um, Margaret may, uh, there's no point talking to Margaret if she can't hear me. <laughs> um, but I hope you'll be able to refresh your screen and, uh, and be able to see what I'm doing. So the, um, so the sketchbooks, I, um, I keep and I doodle in essentially. They are, um, they're 
sketches that are me trying to generate new types and forms of patterns and new ways of uh, new ways of representing them and I work from really really simple shapes so I called the exhibition um, axiomatic worlds because um, I've got a background in in maths it's a long time since I did any maths and I've forgotten most of what I learned but some of the concepts stuck um, and I love the idea of um, well um, the way that I draw and the way that I create patterns um, is quite is quite rule based um, but it starts with really really simple elements so the, like the most basic drawing elements that you can think of and then I build on them so uh, so in maths the axiom is the kind of the basic element so the thing that you take for granted and the thing that uh, you build a whole system upon so you start with like you know your numbers or your concept um, uh, that's very very basic um, and then you build your kind of whole mathematical system upon that and that's essentially what I'm trying to do with these so I create little rules for myself as I go along um, and they develop and kind of generate um, differently over time so I thought I'd talk to you about a few of the different patterns that I've kind of um, yeah talk to you about a few of the different patterns that I've kind of come across over the years and I've used again and again so uh, this pattern here with the, uh, the like the undulating lines is one that started as like me drawing a landscape and then simplifying it and simplifying it and simplifying it uh, until it was completely abstracted um, it's got a lot in kind of common with like topographical maps and uh, and things like that which I'm, I'm really interested in kind of visually uh, but uh, but it actually um, it comes from the process of drawing um, so I start by drawing one line that I try and get as straight as possible and then I draw another line next to it and I'm trying to emulate the first line so I'm trying to copy the first line but because I'm not very good at drawing straight lines um, because nobody is because we're human and we are kind of yeah we're complex beings and because the paper surface isn't entirely smooth and because the pens aren't entirely smooth you end up with little wobbles so when I replicate that line again I get more wobbles and more and more and more and then they keep developing as I get further down the page or further up the page so that's how this pattern developed here so it started with straight lines at the bottom and then I drew more and more and more and more of them and they get bigger and bigger and bigger as I go up the page so here's another example of that same design. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you, hopefully you can see that a little bit better. And that's done in exactly the same way. But I can do the same thing with circles and I just draw a, like a row of circles and then I draw another row and another row and another row and gradually I'm trying to keep the circles um, the same size but gradually they start to drift and some, some become bigger and some become smaller and where they become bigger they, they expand and where they become smaller they kind of shrink and so you get these kind of wavy lacy patterns yeah, that's this one is the same thing but with triangles so I draw a row of triangles at the bottom and then I draw another row of triangles again and another row again and another row again and each time I'm kind of trying to replicate the size of the triangle below when I draw the one on top and then what happens here is that suddenly one will become a little bit bigger and then the next row it'll be bigger again and then the next row it'll be bigger again and then they kind of push 
out and become bigger and bigger and then these ones in here become smaller and smaller and it creates this um, kind of bulbous pattern here. So, I do like working with triangles a lot and this is a triangle pattern as well. And this one was more randomly generated, so I didn't start with a straight line for this one. I just started by putting dots all over the page. And sometimes the dots were really close together, like in these parts here. And then some parts, the dots were further apart. And then I just joined all the dots. So I'm creating small triangles where the dots are close together, and then large triangles where they're further apart. And then in a lot of my work, I try and combine patterns and combine ideas. So I've got these ones where there's just one, one thing that I'm doing and I'm doing it over and over and over and over and over again. But then they do get a little bit more complex. So, um, so like this one here and this one here. I've created a, a shaped canvas of a circle and that's the, the area that I'm drawing inside. But then I also put like obstacles in its way. So now I've got two things to remember. So I've got my starting point, but rather than just drawing a straight line, like either down the circle or across the circle, I'm actually kind of going, okay, so I want to draw, but I want to avoid all of these obstacles. So I'm going to go around them. And then wherever I come to an obstacle, I'm just going to, avoid it. So it's almost like um, like if you've got like a magnet and you want to avoid it. Um, so you end up missing parts. So I'm going back to my small sketchbook now because I want to show you actually how to make some of these patterns. So I like a square sketchbook, as you can probably tell. These are all squares of various different sizes. Um, I, I really like that regular shape. Let's find a nice clean page. And I'm going to do something fairly small in this one. So I'm going to see how close I can get uh, because um, this does take a long time if you do big pages. So I want to make um, a little square in the centre, two, three, um, of my sketchbook, and then just draw in that. So, so I can rub out these lines later on. but it just gives me a limited canvas to work on for now. Um, just so that you don't get bored, really. And then I'm gonna work with, um, I work with fine liner pens. These are exactly the same ones that I use when I'm doing uh, like watercolor, line and wash um, kind of uh, things. They come in different sizes and for these, I tend to use like the whole range of different sizes and you get different effects depending on the different sizes of pens that you use. So, um, so for this one, I'm using a 0 0.6, which is fairly big again, because I don't want you getting bored watching me do this. So I'm going to show you that first pattern now. And the, the rules for this are really simple. It's like start with a straight line and you can use a guide like a ruled line or like the edge of your page or something like that to get your first line. And because it's the first line and I've used a guide, it's fairly straight. So now I'm going to draw another line next to it. And again, it's, it's fairly straight, but I can see here there's a little wobble there and there's a little bit of a wobble there. It's a bit it's a bit wider, the gap between the two lines there, than it is here. 
So when I draw the next line, I want to try and copy this line here. So I'm going to co copy that little wobble. And I'm going to copy this slightly bigger wobble here. And then let's take it along to the end. So now I've got a line that's got more of a wobble here and more of a wobble there. And I'm going to keep going and trying to copy, now I'm trying to copy this line and all of its little wobbles. And now I'm going to do the next one. And all I'm looking at is the gap between this line and that one and this line and that one and just trying to keep them about the same. And I just keep going and drawing lines. Oh, and then I made a big wobble there because I wasn't paying attention. But that's okay because then I'll just copy that the next time, the next time through. So I'm going to go again and keep going and keep going and keep drawing more of these lines. And every time I make a little wobble, I'm trying to copy that again in the next line up. And you can see that pattern starts to form really quite, really quite fast. And then you can decide what you kind of want to do with this almost. You can sometimes like choose to exaggerate it. So if I make my hand, if I make my arm loose and give myself less control, then as I follow the pattern and try and copy all of those little wobbles, I over exaggerate like way too much because the thing that I don't want to do is to clash my lines and join them together so I end up overdoing it and and then the lines become really quite wild. And the faster I go, almost the, the wilder they become. Let's do the next one there. I think one more and then I'll finish this page and I'll move on to the next one. Okay, so you can see how the pattern uh, really develops quite fast when you do that. Um, and this is something that I, um, I use in lots of prints. I love the, the kind of the look of it, but I also find it a, a really interesting uh, pattern for kind of exploring different types of concepts about growth and um, an inheritance and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. So I'm going to do another one and this one I'm going to make um, circular. So let's make a little circle Again, I'm doing this smaller than I probably normally would. So let's go for four and a half centimetres a circle. Now, 
and then I'm going to make concentric circles inside this. So let's just bring that down a little bit. And then a little bit more. So I'm bringing it down to three centimetres now. And each time I draw a circle inside, I'm decreasing the um, the size of the circle more each time. So there's half a centimetre difference between the outer one and the inner one, a centimetre to the next one, a centimetre and a half to the next one, and then that's all I'm going to do. But I can I can make this pattern as big as I want. And then uh, for this one I'm going to do triangles. So again a really simple form um, and then I can just I can build on it and make it complex in any way I like. So you can do this as a random pattern, but I'm going to use this quite regular one. You can just draw little dots and then join the dots. But I like making like a ring of triangles. I'm not sure I'll be able to do the whole triangle this time. Um, let's see how much I can, I'm going to aim for half. And so I'm making the triangles on the outer circle really small and just drawing a little ring of them all the way around and just making sure they kind of touch that circle somewhere and they're all about the same size. And then the next circle round I'm going to make a slightly bigger row of triangles. So again, they're just touching that circle somewhere and they're all about the same size. And then it, I'm going to do the same again, but slightly bigger triangles here, like that. And then you've probably guessed I'm going to do a nice big one in the middle. Maybe, maybe it needs another one there like that. And then what I do with this pattern is join all the triangles together with other triangles. So I'm just trying to enclose the space and make sure that every space is filled with some kind of triangle. So I'm joining all the points together. And if there's a bit where there's a gap that's bigger than like two triangles together, then I can, I'll allow myself to add one in like this. I can add another triangle in there just to keep the triangles in this kind of segment all the same size. Like I'll add another one there, another one there, and then keep going, adding triangles into this space. And then we join the big ones like this. And I keep going until the space is filled. And this is the part of the process that feels quite, I don't know, like, Meditative, it's where you can get really lost in the process. As your triangles get bigger, it becomes harder to keep the lines straight. But um, if you look at some of my screen prints that are quite big, um, some of the triangles in the middle have got uh, really quite wonky lines but you don't tend to notice because you just see the overall pattern. And I've got to keep a really keen eye out for like leaving four or five sided shapes because that's a problem with this pattern too. It's something that happens. So like I've left a four sided shape there and it would be really easy to forget about that. So I can decide 
I could close it that way, I could close it this way. It doesn't really matter in this case. There's another one there, let's close it that way. And sometimes you can join bits together like this and end up with a an interesting shape here that then you can close up by adding more little triangle lines into it. There we go, fill this bit in round here. This one here. So there's an interesting shape. I've got to decide. I put a line across there. I could put one that way, but that would be an awkwardly long triangle. So I'm going to put one there and one there. So I find that I can set myself rules for how I do a drawing like this, but then I find that um, as I'm going, I might like decide on a rule that um, that helps me to finish the uh, the piece and make it look cohesive and interesting. So um, so things like you can add an extra triangle in if it makes the drawing look better. Um, things like if you've got a four sided shape it's better to close it by the shortest line possible. But these are just my like little rules that I come up with myself as I'm drawing. And I realise that that's what I'm doing. And it's interesting to make a note of them. But essentially, at the end of the day, I'm just having a play in a sketchbook. So if I want to do this again and follow different rules and see what the different results would be, then that would be something that I might do. And quite often that thing of trying something and kind of finding it a little unsatisfactory and then changing the rules so you get something that feels more interesting is where most of the interesting drawing ideas come from. So there's my half a circle, I'm going to leave it there. But I hope you'll see that if you did this at a bigger scale, hang on, zoom me out, then this is what you'd get. So you get this really, like, um, you could do like a circle and finish it there, but I've kind of carried this one out to the edges of the page. It's, it's exactly the same as I've done here. Exactly the same, nothing different. Um, but to do this one, I did it on a piece of tracing paper that then I could turn into a screen print. Um, but yeah, did it with exactly the same pens, using exactly the same method. So um, I see there's still some people struggling to get on. Um, I should let you know that this is going to be recorded, so it's going to be live on my YouTube channel afterwards. So if you um, struggle to get on today, you may be able to watch it at a later date. Um, so uh, so I hope I hope that you'll get to see it if you if you do want to. So I've got a third little demo that I'm going to do, and I've already done the canvas for this. Um, I, the canvas I call the uh, the paper with the uh, the guidelines marked on it in pencil. So for this one, I'll show you again. I've done a circle and then I've done some guidelines with a ruler. I did this beforehand because I knew that it was going to take a long time if I did it on screen. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So um, first of all, I'm going to put in my obstacles. So you can spend time kind of colouring these in. Um, but I'm just going to draw the outlines for now. Um, let's see. Let's draw my little squares. 
let's do that one and that one oh, let's make that a bit bigger and that one and that one and let's do another row so I do this quite often and I make obstacles of like all shapes and sizes usually, usually with kind of geometric shapes but sometimes they're circles sometimes they're triangles um, sometimes they're like long and thin and then I've got my circle and I want to fill it with lines just in the same way as I did uh, with which piece um, the one I can't see um, yeah just the same way as I did with this I'm following those lines but instead of them being straight this time they're going to be interrupted by the by the obstacles that I've put in place. Hi hi to Ministry of Home from Australia that's very cool I hope it's not some awkward time in the morning for you um, so yeah so I'm you can start anywhere with this um, I'm gonna start at the top and um, I'm just going to draw a line there and it's a slightly wonky one but that's okay you can start anywhere with this and now I can't get my line through that gap uh, it's not it's not big enough for the line to go through so in that case I'm going to go around this obstacle there we go now I could just go straight up again but actually I can bring it back to being parallel to that first line that I put in and then I can do the same again. I'm going to come in just from the edge of the circle. I'm going to go down and around the obstacle and then back out. Oh, and I wasn't paying attention and my lines have collided. I don't like it when that happens, but it's a sketchbook. It doesn't really matter. And then there, there's another one. And then let's do another one there. There we go. Now, in this case, I can't get through that gap. So I can bring my line up here, but then it has to come back down again. And it has to go around that little square. And now, can I make a decision? Can I get the line through that gap? Possibly, but it's a bit tight. So I'm going to go around again around this one and then I'm going to follow this line around here and at this point it becomes like doing a maze and you end up kind of following lines through a little labyrinth and hopefully out the other side it is possible to draw a shape where they don't come out the other side and if that's if that's what happens then I just leave a, a little a little void there and this one I can't get through that gap so I'm going to turn around and go around this square and then back out there and I'll do a few more of these just so you get the the gist of it and then oh that's tight I could go up there yeah next one around here and then that has to go out that way so I'm just creating like a shape that um, you get all of these little lines that um, kind of have to go around all of the little obstacles and it just makes for interesting patterns in there so I was just wondering um, I can carry on with this a little bit more uh, does anybody have any questions um, I'm going to have a look and see um, if anybody's asking anything that I can answer. If anybody, anybody has any comments, then I'd love to hear them. If not, then I'll show you another pattern.
Okay. See ya. Is it Tamari or Tamari? Um, but yeah, she said she loves the idea of obstacles in the lion's way. Uh, yeah, and and Catherine, yeah, it's it's very meditative. It's um, it's actually quite hard to do on camera because you just get kind of so caught up in the process of it that it's really hard to kind of remember that you're supposed to be like explaining things and talking to people. And I find that um, when I do things in demos, they're not as neat as I'd be doing them like if I was. Um, completely focused on it um, it's it's always the case it um, because I'm not kind of giving it that full focus but there is something about the kind of mental state that you get in when you're making these that um, I find very peaceful and and calming but it also it's something that helps me to process ideas and I end up with kind of thoughts and um, and feelings about things that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So So I don't think there's any more questions. So um, if you're interested, I'll show you another uh, another one. And um, yeah, which one should we do? Oh, let's do the triangles like this, shall we? And um, that's quite fun. So so little triangles on a curve um, started random and then kind of got joined together. These ones work more like the straight lines that I was drawing. So I'm going to start with a guideline um, and you can start with any shape you like. So I've done some of these in squares, some in like um, some just on a straight line, uh, some on curved lines, um, some round circles, all sorts of things. And just start with a straight line and then draw little jagged teeth on it. And then I close the tops of all the triangles together. So yeah. Oh, I've got questions. Do you do different coloured pens in one drawing and use different sized nibs? And are the pens permanent fine liners? Um, so yes, the pens are permanent, uh, permanent ink, um, and they're waterproof as well. So you can paint or colour over the top of them. Some of the early ones I did, I did um, in here, like the designs, and then used Pro Marker to colour in uh, in between them. Um, uh, different nib sizes are really useful for different types of things. So I really like the really fine, like this one's got really fine lines, and you can see the difference between these triangles and those ones. Um, I'm using a large one today because um, because it's a demo, so I can make it quicker and it's easier to see on camera. Um, also, uh, something like this would be really quite hard to screen print. So if I did a whole uh, big drawing in something this fine, you might find I might find that some of these lines don't transfer onto the screen very well. So I tend to use a slightly larger pen for screen printing. Um, And the best possibility is to mix patterns. Um, so um, I I do mix patterns, and um, I tend to um, like define an area to put one pattern in, and I'll put the pattern in that area, and then kind of create a separate area for a different pattern. Um, or if the patterns are different scales, then um, you can do one pattern inside another. Um, I find it quite hard to stop a pattern, so I find it when I'm when I'm drawing a pattern, I find it quite hard to draw 
to change it or to stop it. But then in exploring how to do that, I've kind of come up with some really, some, well, I think it's interesting work that, um, uh, that I've kind of defined different areas and then changed my rules inside the area and changed the pattern as a result. Um, so per personally love only black when drawing. It's so graphic. Huh. Um, yeah, I have done the, I have done the other one in colour, but I tend to use this as a um, as a means for generating patterns that I'll then turn into screen prints, um, and the screen prints will be in colour. So um, so the um, so the screens yeah so the screen you. you no. So when you've transferred it to the screen, you can print it in any colour, and I like to play with colours a little bit there. I mean, you can tell like most of these are kind of neutral colours, but I, um, some of my uh, newer work, I've been experimenting with a little bit more bold colour. Um, but I find I really like the black in the sketchbooks. Um, but yeah, I do have, I do have the odd one where I've I've done something in colour and tried mixing different colours. Um, do you always have to keep your lines the same distance apart? Um, well, that's the rule that I set up for keeping lines the same distance apart um, helped generate that interesting pattern. Um, and this one here where I'm trying to like, I'm drawing this triangle and I'm trying to keep it the same as the triangle below it. I find that that gives me interesting patterns, um, but there's different ways of going about that. So, um, so I play with that a bit. Um, so, um, is it in here? There's one where I did, um, yeah. So I, I did a page where I just drew lines and the idea was to just keep them the same distance apart. But instead of like judging it with the line below, I'm judging it with the um, yeah the edge of the page, and I'm using my like my little finger. I'm trying to use my little finger like to keep the line straight, and kind of keeping it level with the edge of the page as I go up. And it's a much more subtle pattern. Um, I mean, it is just straight lines, but because they're all hand drawn, you get somewhere they're a little bit further apart and somewhere they're a little bit closer together. And I really love that. I know it's, um, yeah, it's really, really simple, but sometimes, sometimes the simplest things are the best. And I keep having to find, I keep trying to make things complicated, but then I try and edit them back. And also on its own, this is maybe not very interesting. But kind of as a as a part of a bigger piece, or to do in an area on a on a print, or uh, or something like that, then that could be re that could be really nice. Um, or you could use it to like represent the sea or something like that. So yeah, so I'm gonna draw some more of these triangles. And there is a little bit of a shape to this starting to emerge. Like my lines along the top are now a little bit wonky and a little bit wobbly. And that's really going to be um, you know, once that happens, it kind of starts to change quickly. So also if you do this in a smaller pen, um, and you do smaller triangles to start with, it takes you long to fill the page, but 
the patterns become more obvious, more, um, uh, you know, um, as you kind of fill up the page. So there we've got nice and nice bump on this side now and then a little bit of a dip there. Gonna do a couple more rows of this. And then I'll answer any final questions. And then I think that's going to be me signing off for today. So thank you for joining in with the, with the live stream today. If you give any of these a go, I'd be really interested to see, um, to see what you, what you do. Um, go there we are right I'm gonna leave it there so oh yes do I know the drawings of Wilhelmina Barnes Graham oh yes yes I am a, I'm a big fan of Wilhelmina Barnes Graham and uh, yes um, uh, yeah when I started kind of drawing a few of these drawings like quite a few years ago um, somebody introduced me to her work and especially the later works where she's kind of drawing the sea, you can see the similarities and I could see exactly why the, um, they, uh, they recommended it. But her screen prints, are the bold colours are beautiful. Um, the way that she layers colour, yeah, it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And how often do I do live demos? Well, um, so I did one last week, which was a test to test the, uh, the, the system. Um, I did uh, I did one last Saturday and this is my second one and I'm doing one tomorrow uh, after that I'm not sure but I've really enjoyed the process so I think it would be great to to do some more and if it's something that people are interested in and, and like to watch and are finding helpful then yeah I'm very happy to do more of them so I'm gonna come back to the on the screen camera there we go. I'm back. So yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I um, uh, thank you for commenting and uh, thank you for joining in. Um, I've got uh, the link to my website should be down below. And um, I've also got an, I've got two Instagram accounts, uh, one where I share art like this and I'm sharing details of the exhibition and that is at Lou Davis Art. And then I've got another one at Lou Rachel Davis, which is linked to the kind of work that I produce usually on this channel, which is um, kind of house portraits, street scenes uh, and watercolour patterns and things like that. So, um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I, I hopefully, uh, hopefully be doing some more of these if, uh, if people like them. Uh, thank you very much for joining in today and thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, if you uh, yeah if you do any uh, of the sketches like I've um, like I've shown today, then um, yeah share them with me. Um, you can uh, message me through my website. You can um, you can share them on Instagram. Um, you can tag me in a in an image, or you can uh, send me a DM and I'll check them. So thank you, uh, thank you for um, thank you for joining in, and uh, I look forward to. Uh, seeing you again online sometime soon. Okay, bye-bye.